Okay, so I wanted to get started with a look at Zorin OS. This is 17.3. Um, this is one that I've actually never used, but it seems to have gained some popularity uh, over the years as being a newbie friendly, I suppose. Uh, they kind of build themselves as an alternative to Windows for people who may not be quite as tech savvy as a way to ease you into Linux. Um, I've never used it, uh, so this is kind of a first look for me as well. Um, so I figured we would give this a try. So let's go ahead and just do an install. Let's see what this installer looks like. <clears throat> I'm actually not sure what type of installer this is using, but um, as far as I know, oh, this looks like just a standard Ubuntu installer. Um, and it is based on Ubuntu, which I think it's based on the, um, and you can say don't participate, you can opt out if you want to do uh, data collection, stuff like that, which is nice. But I believe this is based off of the 22.04 release of Ubuntu LTS, so not even the latest Ubuntu, but I do think they have the latest kernels and things from the hardware enablement. Um, we're just going to go ahead and, you know, um, we'll play around. Let's see if we can do some editing on our own here. So I want to create a new partition. You don't actually don't have to do this. I just wanted to see how hard it was to do on here. So let's say we want to do, eh, you know what, forget that. We'll just go back. We'll just let it erase. Let's do this the simple way. Let it see what it wants to do on its own. All right, because I don't think I set up. EFI, I don't believe. Um, it does do that correctly. We'll just do our name. Uh, da, da, da. Again, this is all the standard Ubuntu stuff as far as the install, so it shouldn't take too long. So, again, I've never used it, and it, again, based on Ubuntu, they're kind of build themselves as like this alternative to Windows 11, especially since Windows 10 is going to be go going uh, end of life here in just a few short months. Um, I believe, I, I can't remember if it's like October or September or something like that. And this is, uh, according to this video, is, is um, April 1st, 2025. I'm not sure how much longer Windows 10 has left. I haven't used Windows 10 in a while, but I know it's only got a few months left, and a lot of people aren't too happy about Windows 11. Um, I've just toyed around in Windows 11 on a virtual machine, um, and there there's some tools you can use to kind of de-bloat it, because it is somewhat bloated out of the box, but there are some tools you can use out there to de-bloat Windows 11 um, and do those sort of things. But if you're curious about Linux, this is one that I've seen a lot of people recommend for new users. Um, I've been using Linux for well over 20 years in, in one form or another, so I'm not really what you would call a newbie, but um, I am curious how well this would look to somebody who might not be as... Uh, burst in Linux and things like that. And, you know, would this be a system that somebody could just throw on, you know, like their mom or their grandma's computer just to get them something running that's not Windows? Um, but again, this is a first look for me as well. I've never used Zorin, never tried Zorin. So we'll see what it looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and let it install. Doesn't seem like it takes too awful long and we'll let it run through its install. Um, I'm not sure how long Zorn's been around. I know it's been around a while. Again, this is Zorn OS 17. <clears throat> they do seem to lag behind quite a bit on their version of Ubuntu that they're based themselves off of. Like I say, this is still using the 22.04 LTS, but they do seem like they enable the latest kernels that come with the hardware enablement. So if I'm betting, and I'll check it once we get it installed and booted back in, if it's using the 6.11 kernel, which I believe is the latest hardware enablement kernel. And I bet in theory you could even upgrade that yourself uh, if you wanted to use something like 
um, Xanmod or something like that. I'm not sure if that would be compatible with this system, but it should be based off Ubuntu. It may work. But again, a, a newbie, somebody who's fresh to Linux, probably wouldn't even worry about that now. It's showing the 6.8 modules there. It looks like it might be installing the 6.8 kernel. Again, that's not a very old kernel, though. I thought it would use the 6.11. But maybe after we do an update or something, we'll see. I just pulled the ISO from the website. All right, installation is complete. Let's go ahead and restart. Ooh, pretty. Now we are booting back into the install of Zorn. It has a really nice animation to go in. Now this looks like the standard uh, GDM from GNOME. And it looks like you have Xorg, and I imagine this would be Wayland. Uh, it looks like it is doing Wayland by default, but you can also do Xorg. Uh, okay. Now let's see if I can set up my Welcome to Zorn. And hi, take a tour to learn your way around and discover essential features. They do have some nice production value on their system which is nice for people who are new so that's kind of cool sure let's start the tour see what it looks like if it will let me go ahead and change my display settings here see if I can get get that looking a little bit better there we go that way not everything's so crazy all right so let's see we start the tour open menus to launch apps you can search for apps and find shortcuts to common locations in the menu choose your desktop look with Zorin appearances so let's launch that see what that looks like okay so you have what looks like the standard which is just a just a standard you know similar to like KDE or something like that um, start menu you have does it automatically change? Or you, I'm assuming you have to apply. Okay. No, it changes. Okay. So, oh, that has like a different look down. Yeah, that's more of like an, an old, older version where you get the full icon down there. And that probably, yeah, that's more like a gnome look there. But you got kind of a dock. And that's just straight up gnome right there. Yeah, that's just what a standard gnome would look like. So this looks good. This is what probably most people would recommend. This would look very similar to Windows 10 out of the box, you know, if you're using a Windows 10 system. So looks like you do. They do have a pro version. Let's click on that. I'm curious. Okay, upgrade to pro. And they have an education, which I'm assuming would be for like schools or colleges or things what happens if you click upgrade normal installation support code okay I'm assuming you would have to purchase it <laughs> that's a little strange purchase pro what's it happens if I click it oh they use brave okay oh they're using brave as their yeah okay huh most Linux distros come with uh, Firefox out of the box. I'm assuming because of what Firefox did with their terms of service, a lot of people got an uproar over that. That is surprising they're using Brave. I don't even know of any other distribution that uses Brave out of the box. That's interesting. So if you want the pro version, you have to pay like 50 bucks. That's a little strange, but the free version is probably fully functional, I'm assuming. Um that's interesting that is interesting uh, again that'd be a good way to support the system I'm sure again this is Linux so you can set it up however you want and I'm sure everything would be workable uh, without getting like a pro version it looks like it's just you get different appearances and things for the pro version that would be to help if you really love Zorin and you're wanting to support the development I'm sure that's what that's about <clears throat> I, I, it's warning me that I am using a virtual machine so um, 
It's telling you you may have limited experience in the virtual machine. You can do your online accounts. So again, like GNOME, you can set up your Google, your Nextcloud, your Microsoft account. You can sync all those things together, similar to what you would in Windows, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can link your phone. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, so you can link up your devices. And then let's see what their soft... Oh. Updates. Well, I'll check updates in a minute. All right, what was this? The software center. Do they have a special software center? This looks just like the standard GNOME software center. Yeah, that's just the GNOME software center. It looks like they're using 45.3. Okay. I'm curious what repositories do they have enabled? Do they have anything? Interesting. I don't know if they use like Flat Hub or anything like that. Let's look at, say, OBS. Okay, yeah, Flat Hub. Okay, they have Flat Hub. They do have Snap. Okay, so is Snap installed by default? Yeah, okay, so it does. It looks like it's using Snap out of the box it's using flat packs out of the box so that is good um, I'm assuming you can set a dark mode um, for this as well let's go to appearances let's go to where would that be at I haven't used gnome in a while this is basically gnome I'm not sure, to be honest. Because this is an older, kind of an older version of GNOME. Uh, yeah, there it is, dark mode. You can just select, oh, that's kind of cool. That looks nice. Hey, that looks pretty good. Huh. Okay. Hey, I like that. That looks pretty good. I'm not too crazy about the icons, or the folder icons and stuff. Those are kind of odd looking in the dark mode. But that's interesting. Uh, I am curious. Again, I was using a... Let's see. Do they have like their own update system? I wonder. I don't really know. That is cool. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just GNOME settings is all this is. This is basically just GNOME with some, I'm assuming, just some um, some extensions to make it look, you know. You can get some extensions for GNOME that basically looks like this. But uh, I was just curious what we're using here. It is using 6.8, so let's do a sudo at update. Let's see what we got. 21 packages, sudo apt. Let's just do a dist upgrade, see what it does. Okay. We got anything? It's upgrading Brave. So it looks like they go ahead and add the Brave repository automatically. Okay. So, whoops. Let me just reboot this after those updates. And see what that looks like. There we go. Boot it back in. I do like the animation. Startup animation is pretty good. Uh, so, this is pretty good as far as just a basic gnome setup I really don't you know if you know this this asking you to purchase immediately and all that's kind of weird um, again I do like that it's using brave that's interesting so it's kind of cool that they again a lot of people getting mad about how um, Firefox changed a lot of their terms of service and everything it seems pretty minimal as far as things installed but obviously you can get 
anything through your flat hub your software store so if you need anything like I don't know if it's automatically installed but if you need LibreOffice um, yeah, it looks like it is installed <coughs> again this is a pretty basic system it does look nice um, I think it's on par with something like Linux Mint um, I could see a turnoff for wanting to buy a pro version I mean a Linux doesn't need a pro version for you to buy but I do get it they they need support and things like that let's just go to their website okay and this is where they're kind of billing themselves as a alternative to Mac and Windows um, apparently you can buy some laptops and desktops that automatically have it on there let's look at their blog what we got on their blog yes it's October that's that's what they're they're trying their selling point you know here is that Windows 10 is reaching its end of life in October and millions of PCs don't meet Windows 11 strict hardware requirements so uh, and they pretty much say you know Zorin is built to be an ideal replacement for Windows 10 um, and I think this is a good alternative for people who are new to Linux I'd say you know if you're oh that's neat um, if you're new to Linux um, or if you're curious about Linux I think Zorin's a good idea to give it a shot don't worry about trying to buy like a pro version unless you just really want to support the project hey, made with made in Ireland so that's interesting um, you know obviously open source projects need support they need funding they're usually run by volunteers so definitely not a bad idea that if you do really love this system to support it by buying the pro version and you get a few little uh, perks for, for doing such which is neat um, so I don't really know what much else to say about it it is pretty cool um, again I like Brave being the default that's kinda neat um, everything else is pretty much Doc Gnome, really. Um, I don't see a ton of difference between what this would be versus Linux Mint, unless you're wanting a GNOME-based system, whereas Linux Mint generally is uh, is going to be Cinnamon. Um, and again, it's using an older LTS, but a relatively new kernel. Um, but that's about all I got for you. It's just a simple system. Pretty good. Definitely worth a shot if you're into into looking at these sort of things. Newbie versions of Linux. Um, the base install here is pretty minimal, but it has most everything you need to get started with. Um, it looks really good. Like, this is a great implementation of GNOME. Why they didn't just go with, like, KDE or Cinnamon, I'm not sure, but... I like the way they have their gnome set up this is really nice so it's a pretty good system and it's going to be stable it's going to be really rock solid because of based on those LTS versions of Ubuntu I'm assuming eventually probably like Zorin 18 or whatever will be based on the newer LTS's so you'll have that <clears throat> it's got Romina so you can do a remote desktop to like a Windows or something system if you needed to so that is about all I have for you. You know, like it if you like it. Um, subscribe if you want. If not, fine, whatever. But uh, hey, here's Zorin. You know, play around with it, enjoy it. I say throw it on a an old computer or a family's computer and see what they think about it. Uh, especially with Windows 10 kind of going away, this is a good option to to try out. Uh, thanks for watching.